Mr. Speaker, I rise to throw my support behind this appropriation bill. But before I explain why, Mr. Speaker, please grant me leave once again to thank the people of Grosley for bestowing their confidence in me as the parliamentary representative. Mr. Speaker, the people of Grosley have been patient with me. And so, Mr. Speaker, the people continue to say, carry on, carry on, baby. Mr. Speaker, right now, at this very moment, if you take a short trip throughout the constituency of Grosley, the people are not just saying, carry on, baby, but they are singing, what a wow, what a wow, what a wow, baby. And so, Mr. Speaker, I thank the people of Grosley from Monier, Jeremo, Moshi, Labon in the east, Badawaj, Grosley Town, Cap Estate in the west, to Grand Riviere, Marisol Corinth in the south, and all communities in between for their objective support for the work ongoing in this vast constituency. Mr. Speaker, the people are fully aware that I continue to work extremely hard daily, and I am truly there to serve them. And so, Mr. Speaker, it is impossible for me to have had the progress that I've had without the support of every single member on this side, Mr. Speaker. More so, the support from the member of Castries East, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I continue to toil, and I continue to strive, and I continue to do the very best that I can for my people by staying on the ground, having community meetings, keeping them updated through our social media, but ensuring that every ministry from tourism to health to the public service, to agriculture, to infrastructure, to social transformation, to finance, to housing, is always engaged in the interests of the people of Grosley. And so, Mr. Speaker, while I continue to fight, while I continue to ensure that we develop youth and sports in St. Lucia, I stand assured that I am supported by the best possible team to ensure that I carry on for the people of Grosley. And so, Mr. Speaker, I rise to give, not, not a scorecard as the member for Sufre did, but to give an indication through this appropriation bill, some of the developments from my ministry and some of what we have planned going forward as we continue to do our very best to ensure proper youth and sports development in this country. Mr. Speaker, under my portfolio as sports minister, we have a number of ongoing projects through our great nation. One of the projects we have, of course, Mr. Speaker, is the continued development of the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, venue development is a huge part of how you develop the nation's sports Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, at the head of our sports thrust this year, Mr. Speaker, is the upgrades that we had to have made to the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds. And Mr. Speaker, later on, I'll be delving deeper into some of the discussions in this house, in the public, and in the region as it pertains to work ongoing at the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds. But Mr. Speaker, at this point, I will let all of St. Lucia know that we are at least 90% complete in terms of the renovations at the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds. We are ahead, Mr. Speaker. And if you speak to any member of Cricket West Indies in the region, St. Lucia has set the standard for how you develop a cricket grounds in this region, Mr. Speaker. And so, we expect festivities, Mr. Speaker at the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds. Mr. Speaker, while I remain on ongoing projects, I'll come back to Darren Sammy a little bit later. The Bellevue playing field, Mr. Speaker, is currently under construction, Mr. Speaker. 
This is the home ground of our next superstar, Naomi London, Mr. Speaker. And we felt it necessary to continue to develop that training ground. And of course, we will see very soon the construction of the stands and we expect pristine green grass for this people of Viewford North, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, crossover park in Labry. The work has commenced, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that there is proper lighting on this facility. Labry, of course, is a top tier team in, in football in the semi-pro league and they've been begging for lights on the playing fields for a number of years. And so we've started the work at Crossover Park, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we know the story of Mindo Phillip Park. Mr. Speaker, Mindo Phillip Park is the ground that both the best cricketers, the best footballers, the best athletes in this great nation. And Mr. Speaker, it was sad to see the deterioration that this government inherited was it pertained to the Mindo Phillip Park. And so far, Mr. Speaker, anyone who visits the Mindo Phillip Park can see night and day as it pertains to which government that truly cares about the development of sports in this great nation. And so, Mr. Speaker, you would see the stands, Mr. Speaker, are back in full effect, Mr. Speaker, the roofing back in full effect, and of course, ahead of Cricket World Cup, the Players' Pavilion, and of course, we'll be equipping this facility with some state-of-the-art gym equipment to further develop our cricketers, footballers, and athletes in this great nation, Mr. Speaker. And of course, Mr. Speaker, the Grosley playing field. I know I would hear some groaning. The Grosley playing field. Mr. Speaker, the Grosley playing field services, as we always speak, the largest population in terms of constituency in this nation, Mr. Speaker. I like to speak of that because it is a gift and some people consider it a curse. But having the largest population, Mr. Speaker, is a challenge that I enjoy daily, Mr. Speaker. I wake up in the morning, Mr. Speaker, and I'm revved up and I'm ready to go. Mr. Speaker, because I know the people of Grosley have confidence in me, Mr. Speaker, to make the right decisions in the best interest. And Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that at one point the Deputy Prime Minister of this nation was also a Minister of Sport, the people of Grosley never had a mini stadium, an indoor facility with covering and proper facilities for their development, Mr. Speaker. Despite the fact that they were in and they know of the challenges, despite the fact that they know some of the best footballers, including Francis Babalastic, Elijah Joseph, Eden Eve Charles, comes from the constituency and community of Grosley, they never took steps to allow for Grosley to develop and blossom as a sports constituency. And so, Mr. Speaker, right now, Mr. Speaker, if you go there, you'll understand why they're saying, what a wow, baby. Because we have started the covering, Mr. Speaker, the perimeter wall, Mr. Speaker. We've started that, Mr. Speaker. The sitting is expected to come in soon, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, very, very soon, this will be an enclosed venue to host semi-professional and other activities, Mr. Speaker, at the Grosley playing field. Mr. Speaker, while I stay on ongoing projects, the National Aquatic Center has commenced, Mr. Speaker, and the senior minister and member for Castries North reminds me that there was discussion from since 1987 for a National Aquatic Center in St. Lucia, a 50 and 25 meter pool. Mr. Speaker, the commencement of this project has begun, Mr. Speaker, and we have the full approval and we are going full speed ahead as we continue to engage the Minister of Tourism and other stakeholders to host big events in the coming years right here in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So you could see some of the designs, Mr. Speaker. We spared no efforts in ensuring that the legacy of swimming was captured and that we provide the Swimming Association and every swimmer in this nation the best possible facility, international standard for further development of swimming in this great nation, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we have a number of upcoming projects. 
You would have heard me say in times past, we have 90 playing fields in Little St. Lucia, 130 courts on this beautiful island. But this year, Mr. Speaker, the VG playing field needs to get this attention. Right in the constituency of Central Cash Trees, we need to ensure that we have proper lighting, we need to ensure we have proper sitting, and of course, Central Cash Trees are on the top of the semi-pro league, they make every, every, they take every opportunity to remind me that this is one of the meccas of football in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And so, they have dissolved this development and it is coming very soon. <laughs> Not more than grizzly. The Grand Ravine playing field, Mr. Speaker, is going to be getting some lighting. OJ playing field, the Philip Master Grounds, and of course, the member for Viewfort South spared no efforts in indicating that big announcements would be made for Viewfort South because he knows, as we know, that Viewfort historically continues to produce some of our best athletes. And with this Ministry of Youth Development and Sport, we are going to do our very best to ensure that the facilities in Viewfort are kept at the highest standard. And so the Philip Master Grounds, shortly after budget, Financing has had already been um, identified. We'll be getting attention, including the lights and seats and the surface, the containment playing field, as well as the multi-purpose court in the community of Viewfort, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have a story of Leclerc. They literally came from the bottom of the bottom in football and made it all the way to the top in a two-year span, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure if they've gravitated towards a Chelsea and Manchester United style of football, but they've not been faring well so far in our semi-pro league, having played two games and not winning, and they have to face the mighty Denry in Denry this weekend. And so, I'm not sure what have happened over the last two months, but I would advise them to gravitate towards the Arsenal type of football to get back on track. But, <laughs> but Leclerc continues to ensure that they are well organized. They are sponsored, they are well coached. <laughs> the Prime Minister just walked in and asked him about Manchester United. And I will say it again so that he could hear. Leclerc was on the right path in football. In two years, they moved from the bottom of the second division. They moved into the top tier of football and went all the way to the top of the top tier of football. But over the last two months, they've gravitated towards a Manchester United style of football and they've fallen for the cracks, Mr. Speaker. And they are following in the Chelsea mode and taking five for five as well. So I certainly hope that they will go. <laughs> You know, cash <laughs> 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 I And so, Mr. Speaker, we certainly hope that they get on the right track as the lighting at Leclerc is really deplorable for the training sessions and for the development in that Castries Basin, Mr. Speaker. The Marsha Grounds, Mr. Speaker, another mecca of football development. And we've provided and ensured that the designs for Marsha will ensure that we will be mitigating against vandalism and the heating of the galvanized to ensure that we can continue to have football at the semi-pro league in the community of Marsha. Mr. Speaker, the when playing field, another mecca of cricket and football development will be given some attention. The Denry stands will be started very soon after this budget. The Cicero playing field, Mr. Speaker, we know what happened under the previous administration. The Grand Riviere playing field, Mr. Speaker, that's in Grosley, Grand Riviere Grosley, shortly after Debara playing field. And we know the lights in Canary, well, the field in Canaries. Um, in terms of the semi-pro team, the perimeter wall will be given some attention, as well as the court in Vanna. And we know we have a number of courts, including in Sufre, to ensure that we give the requisite attention. And of course, the mecca of basketball in St. Lucia will be given some attention in Central Castries. There are others to come, and of course, we'll have further discussion at the cabinet and the national level. <laughs> That's why I tell you, 90 played fields, 130 courts. Mr. Speaker, in terms of lighting, Mr. Speaker, we all know and we've seen the actual results. It's there. 
that when you light up a playing field in a community, there is more sports development and you see the improvement. And so, Mr. Speaker, this government have decided that it is important in our policy that we have energy, energy efficiency at our venues, Mr. Speaker. We had to move away from fossil fuels and, of course, move towards solar lighting, Mr. Speaker. And so it's a transition that is very costly. And so we took the position that we are going to have a pilot project, and the pilot project was done at the current playing field. And Mr. Speaker, I make no apologies for using Corinth as that pilot. Corinth, over the years, Mr. Speaker, have been used and abused by all associations, Mr. Speaker, and they were never given lights and a proper surface. And so, Mr. Speaker, we went into the community of Corinth and we ensured that we did it properly. We got every approval, Mr. Speaker. We erected an area for battery storage, Mr. Speaker. We used the Corinth Secondary School, Mr. Speaker, to put the panels on top, Mr. Speaker. And then, Mr. Speaker, we have a backup generator that will ensure that this facility is used and used efficiently, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is the model that we are going to use throughout this country as we transition to LED, to solar, and having a backup at our venues, Mr. Speaker. And so, I say congratulations to Granny Ve Marisol Corinth for GMC United and the surrounding communities who came out and really enjoyed uh, the festivities on the Corinth playing field. And of course, you will see the first goal scored under light at the, the Corinth, uh, Corinth playing field was by yours truly. And we showed them exactly how we get it done. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as we speak about alternative energy in sports, Mr. Speaker, we are living in the tropics, Mr. Speaker. We live in the tropics. And we know that we get heavy rainfall throughout sometimes. Even in the month of January this year, we had record highs in terms of rain. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to have high water bills, Mr. Speaker, at some of our venues, including Darren Sami. We're talking about sometimes in excess of $13,000 a month. And if you understand what happens at these venues, water is used in the toilets, water is also used in terms of wetting the field almost daily. And so what we've decided in terms of our policy is to transition into having cisterns that we can use, use for rainwater harvesting, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, we are not just thinking about now, but we are thinking about our future. The cost in terms of installation, it's a bit high, but we know over the years we will cover, recover this very, very easy. And so, Mr. Speaker, part of the works that will be ongoing at the Darren Sami Cricket Grounds is the construction of a proper water system, Mr. Speaker. And so, we'll replicate this again throughout St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, going straight into some of the programs that we have ongoing, Mr. Speaker, Island Champs. Mr. Speaker, we know for years Intersec, Mr. Speaker, was just not being attended and given the attention of the wider society. And so, Mr. Speaker, this year and last year, we took the uh, approach that we are going to have our inter-schools competition on the weekend. Last year, we started a consultation and it was felt that we were not entirely ready. But this year, Mr. Speaker, through the efforts of the Minister of Education and his team, in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, and through the backing of First National Bank, who pumped $100,000 into our young people, we were able to have island champs for the first time in our history on the weekend, Mr. Speaker. And so, we saw the festivities, Mr. Speaker. We saw some of our best athletes come out, Mr. Speaker. And we're certainly hoping that we can identify our next Julian Alfred, Naomi London, within these people. And Mr. Speaker, with Island Champs, one thing has gone un un unsaid, Mr. Speaker, and that is the investment the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports has made into footwear, Mr. Speaker. For years, we saw athletes running all over this country and running, Mr. Speaker, befitted, Mr. Speaker. And so we took the approach from last year 
And in fact, I remember the member for Denry North in, during his time buying track shoes to provide for our athletes. And so 98% of all our fleets were running with proper footwear, Mr. Speaker, at this year's event. And we are working towards ensuring at the primary school level and at that secondary school level, we are at 100%, Mr. Speaker. We also had the inter-district competition at Sufre, Mr. Speaker. And we saw some of our best athletes from the primary school, Mr. Speaker, really were on display, Mr. Speaker. A lot of talent, a lot of individuals that are in training programs, executing, and it's no wonder that St. Lucia is doing so well in sports, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as a Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, we also ensured that when we came in, that we gave as much attention as possible to every young person, even if they have sporting activities at their home. And so for the first time, we ensured that we enacted and we put in place an alternative sports section at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. And so, Mr. Speaker, in our alternative sports unit, we had some challenges, obviously, in finance. And so we had to ensure that we did our best that persons who are involved in drag racing, in BMX riding, persons who are involved in chess, Mr. Speaker, were given that opportunity. And so you saw for the first time, the second time, Mr. Speaker, our inter-schools chess competition with scores and scores and scores of chess players at the Grosley HRDC in meaningful competition, Mr. Speaker. That is what we saw when we decided we needed an alternative sports season. And so we see drag racing continue to develop over 300 individuals from the region coming in for our drag racing event. And we're expecting that this year, with this budget, to really spread the pie and ensure that every alternative sports section is given attention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Semi-Pro Football League, leveraging football to transform lives, Mr. Speaker. Leveraging football to transform lives. This is what this government is about, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when I first spoke to the member for Castries East about establishing, Mr. Speaker, a semi-pro football league, his initial reaction was, and you know sometimes he has a little stammer, let's do it now. We need to do this for our young people right now. We were talking about semi-professionalizing football for so long, but it took a minister, a member from Castries East, a man from Masha, to understand that this is going to transform lives in this great nation, Mr. Speaker. And now, Mr. Speaker, every evening you go through the communities, young people in serious training because they are considered semi-professionals, Mr. Speaker. The approach is different to their development because they are looked as serious people, Mr. Speaker. And this is what we wanted to do, leverage football to transform lives, Mr. Speaker. For the first time in our history, footballers are being compensated for their talents and their skills, Mr. Speaker. And so, the referees are being compensated, in the top tier, I know the coaches being compensated. And of course, as we continue to move forward, we will ensure that at the second tier level, we get the financing to provide that level of support as the semi-pro league develops, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Cricket High Performance Center, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, over the years, we know that our best athletes have been in track and field and cricket. Our best returns as a nation have been in track and field and cricket. These are the only two sports so far. At some level, you may say bodybuilding in the days of week win. But these are the two sports, Mr. Speaker, that we have seen huge returns as it pertains to the fabric of communities, sport of track and field and the sport of cricket. And it was so incumbent upon us to ensure that we establish a high performance center in St. Lucia for the first time in our history, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we have a number of our best cricketers in this program, sometimes training sessions three times a day, mental training, Mr. Speaker, 
physiotherapy, Mr. Speaker, a setup of a professional as it pertains to cricket development in this nation, Mr. Speaker. And so we know we're going to yield great results, Mr. Speaker, as we know one T20 individual playing an IPL can come back with 500,000 US dollars and change his family. And we're expecting and we preach to these individuals, when you come back and you've developed, you give back the way Darren Sami is giving back to cricket development in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And so we continue to do the best that we can in developing cricket in this nation. And so the sport of football also has a high performance program. And again, through conversation with the member for Castries East, we discovered that Earl Bolhugger was back on Ireland and Stuart Charles Favre, one of the best coaches in the region, St. Lucian, was back on St. Lucian soil. And so in conversation, we ensured that our best young footballers, our best young footballers are placed in a program at the under 14 level to develop the discipline and the skills that will take them to the semi-professional league, Mr. Speaker. And so, you see Earl Bolhugger with the likes of Shiloh, one of our shining stars, Mr. Speaker. And we know before that he would play with individuals that were of inferior skills, but with that program, he is playing with good, competent footballers that can challenge him and two coaches that will ensure that he is guided and placed in the right direction as he continues to flourish in football, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this government ensured that for the first time, and I will always say this, Mr. Speaker, and pause, you had a government with a number of athletes, Mr. Speaker. You had a Prime Minister who promised Mr. Speaker that they were going to eliminate, remove totally VAT, Mr. Speaker. And not once did we hear a clarion call, despite the fact that inflation over the years caused one quality football to be in excess of $200, Mr. Speaker. There was never an attempt by the previous government in their five years they went into a sixth year to remove VAT on sporting equipment for young people. But this government, Mr. Speaker, under this Minister of Finance, have removed the VAT on sporting equipment for our young people. And so throughout St. Lucia, you will see a reduction in the cost of your gear. And so you can definitely go and train as often as possible. And I'm even hearing that some of my members have ordered some boots for their communities, which is good. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, World Cup, Mr. Speaker, World Cup preparation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we as a country have been developing very well. The Prime Minister has said to you, sometimes almost ad nauseum, how good this economy and where the trend is in terms of our development. And so we've made so many strides in sports, Mr. Speaker that for some reason, some people in certain quarters are nervous. They are nervous, Mr. Speaker, about the development in our young people in this nation. And they would burn an entire building and bring down an entire nation if they must for them to get back into political power, Mr. Speaker. But it will not happen. And so, Mr. Speaker, I was stunned when I found out, Mr. Speaker, that a letter was written, Mr. Speaker, to the leader of this great nation who has fought tooth and nail to set St. Lucia on the right footing. And Mr. Speaker, sent over to members of the IMF and other global agencies, Mr. Speaker, because we agreed to secure a loan for the NLA. For the NLA, Mr. Speaker, and I will go through it, Mr. Speaker. The NLA is responsible, Mr. Speaker for the development of youth and sports in this great nation. Yes, Mr. Speaker, according to the NLA Act, Mr. Speaker, the purpose of the NLA is to provide for promotion and regulation of lotteries, pools of games, and chants in St. Lucia for the purpose of enacting youth and sports development in this nation, Mr. Speaker. I'm reading, Mr. Speaker, from the NLA Act, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, we know that it's important for our young people to be in programs. We know that it's important for us to have facilities for our young people to be in meaningful programs, Mr. Speaker. And you would tell me, Mr. Speaker, at this opportune time where Julian Alfred has blazed the trail for the next development of other athletes, that you as a leader irresponsibly write such a letter, Mr. Speaker, to attempt to derail the efforts of the NLA to do what they are mandated to do, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have the letter. I will not go through the entire letter because I have a lot to speak about today. But there are certain things I am duty bound as a Minister for Youth Development and Sport to provide clarity on and to ensure that the deceit does not continue. Mr. Speaker, this letter was sent to the Honorable Prime Minister and forwarded to other individuals. And it reads in the introductory paragraph, I write to officially reiterate major concerns with respect to approval by Parliament of a guarantee provided to the National Lotteries Authority to secure a loan in the amount of $80 million. Mr. Speaker, he went into this letter and says it is within the context that the recent resolution approved by Parliament of the guarantee of NLA becomes a major point of contention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition went on to write in this letter and indicate why this should not be. That one, the National Lotteries Authority is not given specific authority, nor does it have the requisite capacity to be engaged in construction activities. Wow. Mr. Speaker, if this was an episode of Maury, wow. you would hear Maury say, wow. the lie detector determined that was a lie, Mr. Speaker. I'll read it again. The National Lotteries Authority is not given specific authority, nor does it have the requisite capacity to engage in construction activities. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, no way this time. let me just stop right here. When I became Dawson. Minister of Youth Development and Sports, one of the first things we did was ensure... Make it? Okay. All right, so since uh, I've been asked to make sure that I make this document by the leader of the opposition a document of the House, Mr. Speaker, so that his colleague could finally read it himself, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when I became Minister of Youth Development and Sport, one of the first things we did was asset mapping, Mr. Speaker. That is why I can come to this house and tell St. Lucians we have 130 playing fields, we have, we, have 100, we have 140 courts and 90 playing fields. Mr. Speaker, within your assets, you would know that you have a Darren Sammy cricket grounds, Mr. Speaker, and you have the George Odlum Stadium, Mr. Speaker. We did that necessary work. The other thing we did was, Mr. Speaker, we valuated our properties, Mr. Speaker. We have values for what Darren Sammy is right now, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we ensured as a government, Mr. Speaker, that any property that the ground stood on, that it was belonging or it belonged to the National Lotteries Authority, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I will get into that part in a little bit. But I will show you for a fact, Mr. Speaker, that the National Lotteries Authority, by the act of the NLA, has full authority, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that they engage in all the construction activities that is going on right now. Mr. Speaker, under Section 4.3, the National Lottery Authority shall, in performing any of its functions under this Act, take such actions as may be necessary and practicable to ensure that its revenues are at least, are at least sufficient to meet all sums properly chargeable to the revenue account, including sums required for the payment of prizes, loans, interest thereon, and for the establishment and maintenance of its properties, Mr. Speaker. The National Lotteries Authority is charged with the responsibility for the establishment of facilities and the maintenance of its properties, Mr. Speaker. They have the responsibility so when we came around for Cricket World Cup, as a National Lotteries, the first thing we did was we established a project committee, Mr. Speaker. 
We brought in, Mr. Speaker, engineers, architects, designers, quantity surveyors. We brought in a project team, Mr. Speaker. That is what we did. And we have every authority to do just that. So the, la the lie detector determined that was a lie, Mr. Speaker. Right, Mr. Speaker, in this letter from the leader of the opposition, <laughs> the member of opposition said, the NLA does not own the sporting infrastructural assets that will be upgraded under this initiative. Wow. Mr. Speaker, this is what happens when you, as a prime minister, was irresponsible. Because the first thing I did as minister was ensure that the NLA had ownership of the property, Mr. Speaker. Up. What's that? The former prime minister, Mr. Speaker. The former prime minister did not. So under his tenure, in a sixth year, they never ensured that the Darren Sami belonged to the National Lotteries Authority. But this was the first thing, the lands, the lands and everything, this was one of the first things we ensured. And so, Mr. Speaker, when we came into government, we did our valuation. The loan was paid off by this government for Darren Sami. And I can tell you, the structure at Darren Sami is valued at $95 million. And we can tell you the land that it sits on is valued at another $5 million, Mr. Speaker. Yes, yes. I, I think we just said that. No liability. But I come into that, Honorable. And so, Mr. Speaker, a $100 million asset, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the surrounding areas the indoor court, where we're building the um, aquatic center. So, Speaker, we ensure that every block and parcel number belong to the National Lotteries Authority, Mr. Speaker. We ensure that, Mr. Speaker. And so, block 1455B, and you can check it at any point in time. 113, block 114, 115, 675, 815, all of which belongs to the National Lotteries Authority, Mr. Speaker. So the notion that the National Lotteries does not own the sporting infrastructure assets that will be upgraded in this initiative, the notion that that does not belong to the NLA is a categorical lie, Mr. Speaker. Categorical lie, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this government, when we came in, we ensured that the financing of the NLA was irrefutable. And so we employ the people, Mr. Speaker, in our accounts department to ensure that we have all our documents aligned, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the former leader also said that the capacity of the NLA to service this loan is not only highly questionable, but is likely to adversely impact his primary role as a founder. You know why he would say that in a letter? Because he knew the month of July 2021 he knew what he signed and his NLA people signed during that time. We were getting in excess of 20%, Mr. Speaker, from our two major agencies of their license and video lotteries fees towards youth and sports development. And we know an agreement was signed for that amount to go down to 17. We know that. We know that he made an assurance to them that they would not have to pay VAT and any other taxes but again, Mr. Speaker, with this government, we've come in and remedied and rectified the situation. And so we know that the National Lotteries is well financed monthly, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I just have to say quickly, when you as a government or you as an individual, just to put it in context, you apply for a loan, a mortgage in your everyday life, banks ask you for all the information that they could get, Mr. Speaker. They ask you for your audited financial statements, and I think the member for Sousa will know this. They will do analysis of your debt service ratio. They will do analysis of your assets. They will do all of this and then decide what other steps they may require you to take for you to secure that loan. And so all of this was done, Mr. Speaker. And we had one extra nugget to ensure that youth and sports development continued in this country. Just a guarantee from a government, Mr. Speaker. And that is what the leader of opposition and the opposition is trying to bring us down for, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, they have not been successful. 
They have been around the world. They have tried, Mr. Speaker. But this government is standing strong and firm because we know we are doing and we are working in the best interest of our people, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to march on. The stadium is in good hands. We had the marketing aspect of our program has started through Ministry of Tourism. We had on, on Ireland, we also had the trophy tour, Mr. Speaker. And finally, Mr. Speaker, we will be having a Darren Sami that the world can enjoy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me just say quickly, since 2007, when the Darren Sami was erected, we've had a number of facilities developed throughout this, this, this globe and in the region. Trinidad have built two stadia. Antigua, we see St. Vincent developing this. India, Australia, and every other world nation in cricket have made significant upgrades to their cricket facilities, including the technology. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we're about to host a global event. We had to invest in Spidercam. We had to invest in audio video rooms for the players. We had to invest in new media, all of which, Mr. Speaker, we know will ensure that the Darren Sami Stadium is up to the time, Mr. Speaker. And that is what we are doing, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue in our programs to provide support for persons like Julian Alfred, Mr. Speaker, because, of course, we know that she is a shining star for us, Mr. Speaker, doing very well on the global scene. She's transitioned now to a professional, but this year we'll continue to provide as much support for her as she continues to develop herself, not just as a sprinter, but as a young lady. And so we will not just pull away our support, but we'll continue to provide support for Julian Alfred, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under new programs, Mr. Speaker, we have a CREPS initiative, Mr. Speaker, with the people from Guadeloupe, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we as a nation, we really need to continue to partner with as many people as possible. And so, Mr. Speaker, the people of Guadeloupe have partnered with the OECS to allow for our athletes to visit their facility for any additional attention they need, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, if they need some medical attention, some additional uh, physical therapy, if they need additional facilities, Mr. Speaker, we've partnered with Guadeloupe to send our athletes across, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to have new initiatives, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, an initiative that I'm very, very excited about, Mr. Speaker, is an initiative that we call sports. Specialized programs and opportunities relating to technical skills, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a partnership with the Ministry of Education and the Taiwanese government, Mr. Speaker, and the NSDC, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, many of our athletes in the professional, the semi-professional league, playing national sport, participating in national sport, a lot of them missed out on their CXCs, Mr. Speaker. A lot of them are looking for opportunities to advance off the court and off the field. And so, Mr. Speaker, I must say a huge thank you to the Taiwanese government, Mr. Speaker, for their support in ensuring that 50 sportsmen and women can enter into an NSD CVQ program, Mr. Speaker. CVQ program, Mr. Speaker, that when they retire and even as semi-professionals, they can still get additional income, Mr. Speaker. And so the program, Mr. Speaker, will be starting shortly after our budget. We're looking at 16 to 45-year-olds, Mr. Speaker. They will be engaged in employability training, Mr. Speaker, because a lot of our young people are just not employable, Mr. Speaker. They, and they just don't understand why they don't get jobs. And so NSDC will be providing employability training, training in first aid, and of course some of the programs will be in hospitality, massage therapy, bartending, etc., electrical installation, etc., etc. We'll also have some agricultural programs, technical, vocational training, and most importantly, Mr. Speaker, you are going to have opportunities to become interns, Mr. Speaker. I'm very excited about this program. I want to thank Dr. Selma Senpri, the manager at NSDC, for responding to this clarion call to get this done. Of course, the deputy, Barry Paul, for doing his best to ensure that this program is put together. 
And as I said, the Taiwanese government and of course the Ministry of Education for coming on board to provide this opportunity for our sportsmen and women, Mr. Speaker. None of this was done by the previous administration. And so, Mr. Speaker, in terms of youth development, Mr. Speaker, my ministry continues to provide opportunities for as many young people as possible. And we have in the youth division a youth service corps. It's an avenue for young persons to gain work experience and it's uh, targeted at graduates at schools. So we have the, 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 the situation in this country where an individual graduates from Sahafa Lewis gets an associate's degree or St. Joseph's Convent have the CXCs and all employers are asking for experience. They cannot find work. And so with this Youth Service Corps, it is a bridge to allow these individuals to get into the public service and some of the private individuals to gain some experience to put on their CVs, Mr. Speaker. And so we have 42 young people within the educational and public institutions employed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud of our youth workers, Mr. Speaker. They sometimes give me pressure. In fact, they all the time give me pressure because they say I just love sports too much. And as if the youth department, sometimes they feel like, you know, I don't blow their trumpet enough. But the fact of the matter is my hardest workers at my department, and I say this without any fear of contravention, are my youth workers, Mr. Speaker. They go throughout the communities, Mr. Speaker, and it almost feels like a thankless job. Bringing young people together, trying to show them the way, trying to set them on the straight and narrow, Mr. Speaker. And they continue to work very, very hard. And of course, this youth, youth month, we see a number of activities ongoing throughout our constituencies, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this year we had a youth parliament, Mr. Speaker, with almost 20 persons participating, Mr. Speaker. It's a forum for young people to really voice their opinions. It's a, an avenue for people to really test their skills. And I think, even politically, it's an avenue that we should explore to ensure that public speaking skills are garnered earlier in young persons' lives. Because of course, public speaking is not just for politics. Number of uh, opportunities overseas once you can express yourself properly. And of course, Youth Parliament gives that opportunity. Mr. Speaker, we had our Youth Awards, Mr. Speaker, in December. 24 young, vibrant individuals were recipients of prestigious awards, Mr. Speaker. Of course, most of the awards for youth went to the constituency of Groselay. And I'm very proud of that, Mr. Speaker. A lot of work going on in youth development in Groselay. And of course, the constituency of Soufre. There's no doubt that they continue to work very hard in terms of youth development, Mr. Speaker. And I'm very proud of the achievements of Soufre also in sport. Special commendation must be made to Grosley native Rejan Montout. She's been working for a long time. She captured the Youth of the Year prize. And at the 2023, <laughs> yes, at the 2023 Caribbean Youth Awards, while they are talking about the youth in a negative way, at the 2023 Caribbean Youth Awards, St. Lucia captured four out of the seven awards presented. St. Lucia won Most Outstanding National Youth Council, overall Youth of the Year, Shogwan Rosary, a dynamic, intelligent young man with a lot of potential, Mr. Speaker. And of course, Chair Excellence in Leadership, Yannicka Jabba William, and the Youth Leader Award, of course, went to Rajan Montout. A uh, special shout out to Raim Augustine Joseph. He was the UA Valedictorian with first class honors, Mr. Speaker, at the graduation. Mr. Speaker, on the youth, we have a number of other programs, including the Skill 758 app. We are about to launch our community outreach. The app is fully functional right now. We had some challenges, but individuals with their talents and their skills, their capabilities, can put it right in this app with the opportunity to gain employment St. Lucia, in St. Lucia, the region, and of course, in the world. We also have a program called You Report with OECS, Mr. Speaker. 10 minutes left. 10 minutes. Okay, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. You Report, Mr. Speaker, another opportunity for youth engagement, a platform, an online digital platform for individuals to express themselves to speak about youth development and community, uh, participate in discussions, be part of polls, Mr. Speaker. The target audience for your report is between the age of 13 and 29. And of course, it's a huge opportunity for data development in this, this OECS region, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 
We have a number of other activities that my ministry definitely participates in. I often say to the member for Labri when he speaks about his ministry being small, I often say about my ministry, we small, but we talawa. It's a small ministry, but an impactful ministry. We may have our issues in-house. Every ministry has it. Every household has it. But when it comes to executing the programs on behalf of youth and sports in St. Lucia, so far, we've been doing well, Mr. Speaker. So far, we've been doing well. The OECS Commission, we have the Youth Advisory Network, where each island provides two young people the opportunity to be part of collective agreements as it pertains to youth development. So each country in the territorial areas provide young people the opportunity to speak their minds. Because of course, as we know, they are going to be the leaders in the near future. Speak their minds and be part of the decision-making process, Mr. Speaker. There's also an OASIS program, Mr. Speaker. It's opportunities to advance and support youth for success, Mr. Speaker. With this program again, with the OECS, it's a, a initiative to try to combat crime as early as possible. We have primary prevention as one of the modules, secondary prevention, of course, tertiary prevention, Mr. Speaker, in terms of really tackling the issues of crime. And of each strategic area, there's a methodology used to target our young people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this has been an interesting year for St. Lucia as a youth, Mr. Speaker. We've excelled in youth development, and we've certainly expelled in, excelled, sorry, Mr. Speaker, with sports development. Certainly, Mr. Speaker. Certainly, Mr. Speaker. This appropriation bill provides many opportunities for all of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, as I wind down, I want to once again thank the people of Grosley for the devout commitment to sticking to the cause to further develop our constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Grosley is truly the shining star up north. And there is no need to dim this light with persons who only have their own interests at heart, Mr. Speaker. Mr. So Speaker, the Grosley Police Station slash Divisional Headquarters is coming along fine, Mr. Speaker. The Grosley Recreational Facility at Pigeon Point is nearing completion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Grosley Mini Stadium, Mr. Speaker, is in full effect, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, the Grand Rivier Community Center is rising over the playing field in Grand Rivier nicely, Mr. Speaker. The current lights, Mr. Speaker, are in full effect, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the apartment style housing in Casabar, groundbreaking ceremony coming soon, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Lafay Kaimaje Road is expanding nicely. And so when you come to watch Cricket World Cup, you don't have to send yourself on a side and send yourself on a side. You're going through nicely, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the people of Grosley elected a worker. And if anyone is willing to be patient and work with me, do them. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone is willing to be patient and work with me, do their part in qualifying themselves. I will help out to the best of my ability. There's an axiom, a popular axiom. You can bring the horse to the well, but you cannot force it to drink from it. It's a popular refrain, Mr. Speaker, in some of our communities that nothing is running. You're a boss man, nothing is running. But Mr. Speaker, Say nothing I running is almost null and void in this current composition of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. We continue to make opportunities available for all. A few weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, in the constituency of Grosley, we were struggling to find masons, Mr. Speaker. We were struggling to find skilled workers for the works ongoing in Grosley. That was before 
the year of infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I announced in my community that we were looking for skilled laborers. Mr. Speaker, very few came, and the troubling and worrying thing is, some came, and they couldn't last a week, Mr. Speaker. It means that we need to, in our communities, get up, identify your skill, and work on it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, unemployment is now the lowest it has been in 16 years, Mr. Speaker. The lowest it has been. We continue to open doors for our people. They need to walk through it. Obtain your skill. Identify your talent, your skill, your capabilities, and walk through those doors that we and this government continue to open, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, $20 million is being made available to close to 30 individuals through the youth economy. $20 million, Mr. Speaker. The MSME loan grant is available for people from all walks of life with business ideas, Mr. Speaker. So many opportunities available in the tourism sector, Mr. Speaker, as we continue to make great strides in this ministry. We have started our semi-pro league and so many of our footballers are returning, Mr. Speaker. Our labor force is at an all-time high with 113,000 people working, a 6% increase. Mr. Speaker, if young people decide to grab at the opportunities made available to them from this budget, this nation will continue to rise from the ashes like a phoenix in the region and indeed in the rest of the world. So, Mr. Speaker, I, as a member for Grosley, unwaveringly support this appropriation bill for the financial year 2024-2025, as I believe that this is a historic moment in this great nation. I thank you.